And now, last but, but not least, I give the floor to Georgi Kandelanki, a former member of parliament and currently project manager at the Soviet Pass Research Laboratory in Georgia. And Georgi, maybe the most important question for you is that how is the Soviet Pass of Georgia related to the to the presence, what we see and, and the kind of developments we, we observe at the moment, because you probably look into the into this link, so it will be great to, to hear it. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. Uh, and uh, thank you for, to you and Rasa for hosting this event, of, of course, to Konrad Adenauer Foundation. Uh, we, of course, went through uh, several examples of the growth of Russian influence, and perhaps the, there could be one sentence that we want people to take away from this hearing in Brussels is that uh, the Russian influence is growing in Georgia and it's a bad thing for the European Union. It's a bad thing for Georgia first and foremost, but it's a bad thing for the uh, European Union. We went through these various examples, but one example I want to discuss is exactly this, how the Russian, what we call information warfare machine, weaponizes Georgia's uh, Soviet past. Uh, we, uh, we mentioned uh, two examples on how uh, the um, how the uh, uh, European, uh, generous European help has unintentionally uh, was abused and ended up enabling the gro growth of Russian influence. There is one example of the government strategic communications department. There is another example, of course, of the criminal justice system and the uh, former chief prosecutor, who now the US government says is an FSB employee. Uh, uh, but uh, this perhaps is, uh, is, is an issue that, that uh, illustrates uh, a broader context of the, uh, of the direction Georgia has been, uh, Georgia has been uh, going into. The strategic long-term priority for the Russian information for Russia in Georgia is to cultivate uh, sort of uh, anti-Western, uh, ethno-religious, chauvinistic strait of Georgian nationalism, to straw discord between the Georgian society and the Western civilization, so that Georgians, so that the Georgian public discourse is infested with false dilemmas, and the Georgians view uh, European Union in this case uh, as a threat. And in this project, uh, the way uh, the Russian information warfare has successfully managed to weaponize the country's Soviet totalitarian past, but particularly the figure and Georgian origins of Joseph Stalin is striking. It's striking also because, not only because it has been successful for Russia, but because uh, this project has largely unfolded under the European Union's uh, uh, radar and its efforts, commendable efforts, to counter Russian information uh, in Georgia. For the last few years, uh, 11 new statues of Stalin have, have sprung up across Georgia. 11 new statues. What, imagine what would happen if uh, you know, one statue of Hitler would uh, would be installed uh, in Germany. There is a poll from last year which suggests that 46% of Georgians think that a patriotic Georgian should be proud of Stalin. Uh, uh, another poll from a few years back suggests that 40% of Georgians think that Stalin was a patron of the church and a Christian. For someone to convince almost half of the population into such an utter lie, it is a success by any means. And the way Russian disinformation or information warfare has, has handled the issue is, is very smart. It, for them, uh, it is not an issue of the past. It is an issue to shape future. Because if you as a Georgian believe that you should be proud of Stalin even a bit, then you, of course you are more receptive to Russian tactical narratives and their conspiracy, poisonous conspiracy theories, such as, for example, that there is a Western conspiracy to destroy Orthodox Christianity. And indeed, this is one of the most popular conspiracy theories that are uh, that are circulating um, uh, around. Uh, the, the leaders of uh, pro-Russian or Russia-linked extremist violent uh, groups have themselves uh, declared sort of uh, uh, declared as their mission to complete the the, the mission of uh, of Stalin. So Stalin's figure works as some sort of umbrella of this of this strategic. Uh, project and the Russian uh, information warfare in this regard has been uh, has been successful. The Western counter disinformation uh, agenda in Georgia it's a broader question, but in Georgia has been focused largely on sort of producing analytical uh, products that don't really impact the public opinion that much. That are sort of supposed to aid the policymakers to devise a more informed 
policies, but we have one study after another that policymakers themselves are generators and, uh, and sources of Russian uh, information warfare. What, whereas the Russian uh, leadership has never hidden that the question of memory is the strategic axis of their, uh, of their agenda, so to speak. And indeed, one of the reasons why this war is going on in the, in the first place is memory or their understanding of memory. So how can we defeat something, Russian disinformation, that is, if we only run after their tactical narratives, tactical stuff, and, it, it, and don't recognize the significance of the strategic issue, which is the memory and memory of the Soviet Union in particular. So one of the one of the messages that uh, sort of uh, uh, we want to to be taken away from this hearing is also uh, a call for recognition of the importance of memory in the European Union's efforts to counter Russian information warfare in Georgia in particular. But I think this is a broader uh, problem. And let me wrap up there, and I'm sure there will be an interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And this is indeed very important to see it in the kind of historical context. Uh, now I open the floor to questions and answers. Uh, I'm not sure if someone in the room is ready to ask the first question, but we also have online people questions. online. So those people, if you could put the questions in writing, we already do have one, one question also written online. But uh, yes, so there are three questions. Maybe ladies first, and then I will give the floor to the to the lady online, and then we go on with the gentleman. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my question is specifically to Mr. Alan Desa, and I'd like to And my question is to what extent Russia also uses religious diplomacy to change the perspective of the Georgias and create us versus them narrative, and to highlight that you will not understand us and they're vastly different because they don't share the same religion, the same history, they don't hold the same values. And to what extent the EU has a losing hand since you can never go against religion and you'll always turn out to be a loser in that sense. Uh, sure, that's a very important uh, uh, topic. The, the weaponization of uh, religion and Georgian Orthodox Church in particular. Um, uh, it has been the, the case that, of course, it's an extremely sensitive issue in Georgia. No one, want, no, no one, uh, in the context of countering disinformation, and and uh, our partners have been very cautious to to deal with this. Uh, a few years ago, there was a project uh, funded also with uh, by our Western partners to you know fly around uh, some of the bishops of the Georgian Orthodox Church to Washington to Brussels. And this was dubbed as a, some sort of counter disinformation project. But I think I'm very skeptical of that uh, undertaking. I, I mentioned the, this figure that 40% of Georgians think that Joseph Stalin was a, a Christian and a supporter of the church. Uh, and it really uh, allows us to understand how this message has been pushed through the church because some leaders of the Georgian, some leaders, uh, and a sizable number of Georgian Orthodox Church leaders have been key in have acted as motors, as locomotives of this disinformation and have uh, actively pushed this poison. Um, a number of bishops have themselves uh, uh, pushed these narratives that, you know, uh, the totally crazy conspiracy theories about Stalin, how great he was, and that we as, a jo we as Georgians should be proud of Stalin. And that's the greatest gift to the Russian Federation and its uh, strategic efforts to so, sow discord between, uh, you know, present again, as I said, the Georgian society with uh, false dilemmas. So, uh, so uh, uh, the reality is green, uh, and I think also the, the only way through which uh, one can tackle this issue and the, the issue of penetration uh, of, the, of the Georgian church by Russian disinformation is the issue of memory. And memory is the only topic through which we can tackle this and, uh, and uh, through basically, um, you know, producing uh, products that, that engage the broader public. Uh, uh, because people, you know, f you know the, I, the, the, the Russians are manipulating uh, the identity. And manipulation of identity is the access of their, of their agenda. And mani identity is manipulated through memory, because identity is defined by memory. And again, dealing with the church and the, uh, the question of Russian influence in the Georgian Orthodox Church is only possible through sort of frontally dealing with the question of memory and memory of the Soviet Union in particular. 